I'm trying to get in the light, guys, but oh well. How's everybody today? We'll get started and I'll just, if people come in, I'll let them in. I wanted to introduce you guys to Joe Flynn. He is a trans medium and teacher, tutor of trans. And I think some of you probably have joined his Facebook group. If not, you sure that's really going to be exciting things happening in the next months and years because Joe's going to be around for a while. Joe, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. So hello, everybody. As Julie said, my name is Joe Rowley Flynn. Um, I'm a spiritualist trans medium. I've been involved within the spiritualism, God, for around 18 years. I first walked into a spiritualist church when I was 12. And the trance states is something that the spirit world pulled me to, something that I was quite reluctant of unfolding. I thought that my development was going to be on evidential. And that side, I went into my first development circle when I was 16, um, started with the evidential and then the trance started to slowly develop um, over those years. So it's been a fascinating journey for me um, and sharing and understanding where we can go with things. So um, it's lovely to be here with you all and um, I hope you enjoy it and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Oh, can't hear you, Julie. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> Said he's very laid back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we still have some coming in. So Joe's already introduced himself to the ones that, have just, that are just coming in. So I'll just give it a couple more minutes. I'm going to ask Joe some questions. I want you guys to ask questions too. Don't be shy. Most of you aren't in classes, so don't be shy here either. So ask away. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask you, we'll get started on why trans mediumship, Joe. And you probably just okay. said it. <laughs> so you answered yes. before I asked it. <laughs> so I, I start by explaining the development stages of trans mediumship. A lot of people need to hear this. Yes. So to me, with the development of trans mediumship, there's so much that goes into it. You know, we can have the evidential side of things where we can be in that much lighter state where we're unfolding that attunement and understanding the process of communication. But the thing that I love about the trans development is that when it comes to that aspect, we're really learning how to move ourselves into a much deeper aspect. Um, but you see, the thing with the trance is a lot of people think that we've got to completely be out of the way. But, you know, to me, from my own experience, we almost become a part of it. Um, but with the trance development, you know, with my own experience, when I was journeying um, within it, with when I was 16, I first went into a trance state when I was 16. And it was quite spontaneous how it happened for me. Um, and when I sat in circle, I would just sit there and um, feel the intelligence of the spirit world coming close. And I would find it hard coming back. Um, so I needed explaining about what that process was and why that kept happening to me. So, you know, when it comes to trance, we can have so many different experiences. But also, you know, we need to look at the personal aspect of ourself, because to me, we're dealing with consciousness and we're dealing with the power of energy. We, we've got to learn those different stages that we go through. So healing and transforming the mind to me is very important. Learning about the stages of understanding your own power and how you can understand your soul and what your soul is. Because to me, through my own journey, I've recognized there's a difference between that mind and the, the great power of our soul, the divine. And so I've looked at other spiritual traditions. That's something that I'm quite passionate about and has helped me within my own journey to really explore the nature of the mind. And it's something that I like to share and teach and to really help us look and explore that power of consciousness itself 
And so the more that we evolve and the more that we learn to sit and take the, the time to sit, because I think we live in such a modern world now where we don't want to sit as much or we want it instant. And, you know, often we can think that this, this is right for us. That's where we need to go with our development. This is what I need to be doing. But actually the spirit world can have other plans for us. And through just sitting in that natural stages of our soul and learning about you and taking that time, then what comes is the naturalness of the abilities that are presenting itself and that are happening there. So, you know, to me, I very much like to look at the old pioneers and, you know, the way I was sort of brought up in that environment was very much of that old school setting. And um, when I was developing evidential mediumship, one of my tutors, um, I mean, she's now, bless her heart, in her 80s, but she sat for, well, she's been going for 30 odd years, but she had a process of development. You know, you couldn't go on the platform until you'd been in the meditation class for six months. You've got to know yourself. Then you moved into the awareness. You'd be there for quite a few years and then into the, the advanced. So it's the same with trance. And I think we, we need to bring back home circles. And I think a lot of people do um have home circles and to me that's something that i'm quite passionate about is how my development worked for me was through sitting at home and the same people and putting that dedication in year after year um and as i said it's been about 10 years now exploring the, the trance states and so you know quite painful at times because to me trance it makes you look at yourself a lot more um, and I think in all avenues of development, we need to really look at that and make sure that we support each other and have those supportive friends around us that can help us through that. Um, you know, and especially if you're dealing, let's say, with grief, because we all go through those different stages of losing somebody that's very dear to us. And so it's important that we explore those areas, that we look and cultivate a mind that can help us to have this awareness of encouragement and nurture. Um, so, you know, that's my understanding so far. And what I love about this journey is we're always transforming. You know, what I say today in 10 years time will be totally different, you know, and that's what I love about exploring this path and where we go with it. Yeah, I like the um, the part about home circles too, but it's not easy. So thank God for Zoom. I believe, exactly. I believe developing and learning mediumship and trans mediumship is going to be through technology. Most, yeah. most part, yeah. So, and yeah. You spoke about um, development stages. What about trauma? So I've worked with people that have trauma in their lives from their past lives and they've never healed from it and they're still so they come into trance and after a few months they feel that they're developed enough to teach right or to um, do other or to do other modalities with trance like maybe mm -hmm. mediumship and so forth what, what would you say to someone I would say, so somebody that's come in with trauma um, and there's a lot there that needs to be worked through, you know, when we're, when we're looking at trance, we're moving into different altered states and, you know, the aspect of that is, is the mind. And, you know, to me, we've got to be able to really blend ourselves with power, as I said, and the soul. And I think if someone came to me and, you know, there has been times where people have gone through trauma, they've, they've gone through, you know, various different things. And that's where I would say, you know, I know you may want to explore the trance states and look at that, but let's first look at the overall aspect of you. And that's where the soul comes into it. So, you know, for me, over the years, I've done sort of soul healing sessions with people on a one to one basis where we explore the soul, look at the soul, look at what's going on and just listening and, you know, giving advice where we can. Um, I think if we start to go straight into the trance, 
when we've got all of that trauma going on, what we've got to recognise, we're dealing with the auric field, we're dealing with the different layers of the mental, the emotional, um, you know, and then we've got the spiritual aspect of ourselves. So we've got to really put the time in and be willing to and be ready to. Um, so, you know, I think that's why when I spoke earlier about the, the pioneers, they really understood themselves, you know, know thyself understand and that support from one another um if you are going through trauma and you're finding that really difficult it's important to share what you're going through and trust you know developing trust with others is is such um a great sacred power itself and it develops a harmony between the group uh between all sorts of aspects with unfoldment so that's what i would say with that Great answer. Yeah. I love that answer. Yeah. So let me ask yeah. you, um, can you explain mind over blending, mind over mind blending? You may have hit that already, but you're answering questions that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So mind over blend. So the human with the blending and the overshadowing and various things like that with trance. Is that right? Yes. Yes. yes, I love you so much. You have no Sorry. idea how much nerve. It's got to be near that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So um, with the blending, you know, there's various different stages with it. And I think, you know, what tends to happen is what I find is the more that we don't look at our own self and our own emotions and various different things and really understand the nature of our own soul, then it becomes really difficult to understand the blending. And that's where the power to me comes into it. When we understand the great power that we are and we understand this harmony that starts within each of us and the trust that comes within it, then the spirit world can go wonderful. We've got our medium to a certain stage where we can start to blend and allow for that consciousness because you know, to me, one thing with trance that people get confused about is they think it's uh, the spirit world coming close and blending with the body. And what we've got to recognise is within us is that etheric, that etheric body, um, that power and the auric field that we are has got to be strengthened. So that's where the, the power and the movement of that power comes into it. So the more that we explore the mind, the more that we explore our emotions, the more that we explore what the power is to us because we're, we're individual and we understand the aspects of attunement and the communication process and how that all, all is um, and understand how the spirit world, how would the spirit world work with you and your team and how your team work with you, then you can start to recognise very slowly these different stages of the blending um, and when we start to look at trance there's loads of different aspects with it we can go from light stages where we will be speaking and we would think well I was aware of that information and then people often beat themselves up about that and go well was I aware I shouldn't be aware but that's that's fine to be aware you know it's okay if you are um, because you're you're going into those lighter stages but as you start to let go more um, and start to recognize with your own development more room of that that creativity of that power of that sacred space then the deeper blendings and the holds can start to come over so we can go into deeper aspects of trance you know that's where various different aspects can come about so people could be sitting and starting to see the overshadowing um, over the medium's face so we know then that there's signals of a deeper entrancement that's starting to occur that's starting to happen if there's changes of voice as well that's something else that can start to come into it where the guide has been able to really manipulate the energy there and and uh, really what we're dealing with is vibration and I think the more we understand about vibration and how the manipulation of all that works, um, the more the spirit world can do, you know. So that's where the power is so important. The more that we enrich the space that we work within for the spirit world, the better that blend will be. You know, um, the, the basics of that, we look at attunement, we look at the blending, we look at the communication. But, you know, to me, it's, it's so important. The more that we work on ourselves, the more room we create for that eternal nature. 
And I think sometimes when we develop, the, the fearful mind comes into it. And so those stages of blending can be very up and down. And I feel that with the altered states, it, it's always changing. You know, we can be aware at the start. And then as that communication starts to you know, unfold, we're not really aware of it. And sometimes we find experiences where we feel we're standing to the side and observing it and thinking, what's that about? It's absolutely fascinating where we can go with this um, and, you know, where the, the movement of, of energy and everything goes. Um, and really, you know, as I said, there's so many different stages of the blend with the voice changing, with the the overshadowing, but also trance to me can then lead us into physical trance states where they can start to manipulate things um, for somebody that perhaps is wanting to move into that area of physical activity. If the harmony's there, if the vibration's there, and that's what the spirit world want to do and want to achieve. So there's many different aspects and I think it's important to understand the difference between when you're speaking from your soul and when you're speaking um, when the spirit world is speaking through you because there's a difference within those energies as well so it's getting to know all of these various different energies and that's why we can't understand all of that in six months you know it's something that takes time mm -hmm. you know and as my chief um said to me you know and that's when I was dealing with all the evidential side he had these structured classes where you know it was very different back then you know just having this structure and moving up gently um so yes that's that's my understanding at, at this time a very good understanding I agree <laughs> what is the difference between transmunership and channeling Oh, you know, I had a feeling I was going to be asked that <laughs> <laughs> because, um, you know, I think it's a very interesting, you know, um, perspective. I think everyone's going to have different perspectives and I can only go through my own journey, my own experiences. Um, but sometimes I think that when we start to give different words to things, it can allow confusion to come about sometimes. Um, and to me, I like to keep things very simplistic, but also I feel that we have to look at the authenticity within what is channeling, what is trance. I know a lot of people, uh, when it comes to this, they call trance channeling and channeling trance, you know? Um, but then there's others that believe that channeling is coming from your higher self. So, you know, we've got others that will say it comes from the higher self and it's more from that enrichment of the soul. But I think if we've got ascended masters and various things like this that are channeling through us, um, that people believe that's happening, you know, we, we should really sort of explore that and think, you know, um, the evidence with that, you know, where's the evidence and almost that authentic nature with, within it. Um, but from my understanding, I can only speak from an aspect of my own journey with that. And I know that if I'm speaking from a soul level, I'm more aware it's, it's more of a lighter aspect of myself. Um, so that feels sometimes it's more channeled, you see. But when we go to trance, trance to me is really the communication between this world and the spirit world and there should be an intelligence working through that that should prove that there is a separate intelligence working through that medium um, and there's certain evidence that's that's given there um, but you know that's my personal opinion and I think everybody is going to have different opinions on it and that's what's so wonderful about it um, is that we can really explore it and see where we can move with that. I agree. So what, do you ever experience temperature changing in the room? Yes. Um, I remember once I, um, whenever people would sit with me, they'd start to go a bit icy cold around their feet. <laughs> and um, yeah. myself as well, when I was uh, working on evidential mediumship, I was doing that for a while. And before I would work, I would just get temperature changes all the time. My hands would be freezing. 
you know, they go, oh, God, they're icy cold. And I think, yeah, I don't quite know why, because um, it's a summer's day, but yet my hands would go completely icy. <laughs> um, but that's the the temperature changes. It's, you know, it's different physical reactions and spiritual um, impressions that are of the energies that are starting to build up. So, you know, it's recognising how when we have these temperature changes, we're moving into uh, something different, which is quite exciting. And I think um, sometimes I'll go hot, other times cold. Uh, and I do believe that my helpers, my guides will give me different temperature changes, energy signatures, various different things so that I've recognised over the years, you know, what's going on. And other people will recognise with one of my helpers that there's this icy cold feeling around the legs. And then one of my helpers comes in and speaks. That always happens every time, which is really fascinating. Um, so I think it's it's really interesting with that, with the temperature changes and all these various different things, definitely. Okay. Um, Barbara is asking, one souls evolve. So one souls, one soul, one's soul, sorry, evolves within the self, also involves the evolution of ascendant masters and the intelligence of spirit. Mm -hmm. You're saying yes to that answer. <laughs> question yeah oh sorry yes okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had, a, had a scatty moment there so, yeah. so again i didn't quite understand that that question it was so 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 one soul evolves within the self and also i think she meant evolves the evolution of ascendant masters and the intelligence of spirit okay so i think from what i'm feeling from that is the more that we evolve within our soul, the more that we are opening ourselves up to recognizing mm -hmm. those hearts that live within that in the intelligence of the spirit world, whether that's ascended masters or helpers, our team, various things, which leads to that evolution and progression. Um, you know, but it's it's interconnected. You know, I don't feel that the soul and and the guides and everything are all separate. You know, as soon as we recognize more about our eternal nature the more we recognise that we're opening ourselves up to, you know. Um, it's only that we live in this very dense physical world that we we don't really recognise the spirit world until we change our consciousness. So um, I don't know if I've answered that or if that's what she, <laughs> that lady was looking for. But is, um. is, it, is it developing a fluency with the language of spirit? developing a fluency so a flow of the language with trance when you're learning a language you start with basic words and yes. how to construct things and then as you become more fluent you're able to have more in-depth conversations that's yeah. that's what i mean i'm i'm comparing it to learning a language yes absolutely yes sorry i understand i do get have a bit of um ditziness at times everyone so <laughs> there's a part of me um yes definitely i think you know with language um to me what i find fascinating is that we all have language here don't we um and as you said it can it can start off very basic but the more that we start to let go the more fluidity uh, comes from that communication um but also the language of spirit what is quite interesting is 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 through that soul um and it's, it's very different. So it doesn't matter if we communicate with someone from a different culture. They may have spoke a completely different language, but yet when they communicate, they can just communicate and give evidence and give all these different things. So it's like a different involvement of language within the spirit. You know, it's like a, a different language altogether, isn't it? Which is quite fascinating. Well, that right. and it, that and it's also trusting how things come through and what comes through. So if you're sitting in a circle and everyone is giving evidential, they're doing evidential mediumship and you're getting an image that is not connected to a person in the circle, but is meant to be conveyed as energy for the circle, mm -hmm. that, that can happen too. Yes, yes. There's, I think with it, there's just so much advancement with this, you know. Um, 
I mean, I like to talk about the old pioneers and the wonderful mm. medium Ellen Hughes. I don't know if anybody uh, knows about this lady, um, but within the wartime, she was an incredible medium. She was a clairaudient medium and um, she worked on platform mediumship in front of thousands of people. But also she had this remarkable ability where she could give a, a sit-in and Helen Hughes only knew the language of English. She didn't know any other language at all, but yet she could take herself into a trance state and then she could speak a completely different language. And the person that was sitting in front would have this wonderful communication with their loved one, speaking fluent in a completely different language. Wow, and she, very advanced. <laughs> That's yeah, enough. You know, I mean, how incredible is that? You know, but it inspires me. And I think, wow, um, what does somebody like that do for those amazing communications to come about? So I think the spirit world are so intelligent in what they can do. And I think we only know a small, a small piece to what they can do, really. I really do. That's true. That makes sense. So what's your version of surrendering? Surrendering and trust. Okay, so how do I surrender and trust or just in, in general? You can tell me us that in, in general. Okay, so surrendering and trust is something that we all talk about and, you know, we, we teach. It's a big thing, surrendering and trust. But to truly surrender, I think we all have our own ways of surrendering. And for me, you know, going back to the soul, recognizing how we can recognize um, various different states that we're within so we know we're in a conscious state but then when we close our eyes and we find a way to move into the peace to move into the harmony of the self then there comes this aspect where this power starts to move within us so for each of us it's going to be explored in various different ways um, some people will explore meditation and I do feel that meditation and the power should be something that should be really evolved and worked together and that's something that I do because I find if I move myself straight into the power and that's all about the energy and the power of myself when it comes to um, being able to surrender my mind may be be a bit all over the place you know that monkey mind may creep back in so I'll find it hard to surrender um, but if I work on the meditation, and I, I very much have worked quite a lot on sort of Buddhist uh, philosophies and Buddhist practices and sort of following that, which they really do study in depth a lot about the nature of the mind and quiet in our mind and still in our mind and finding our true nature. And once we do, we recognise that all what we're creating with our conscious thoughts aren't really real. It's something that we're almost allowing um, to happen so it's the discipline of our development and one thing that I do personally when I know when I'm moving into a trance state and the blending's happening and often the human nature is I want to be nosy I don't want to give up control the um, which always <laughs> happens you know we we move into trance and it happens and then we want to be nosy so I always say to myself thank you for the thoughts you know, and I, I bless it almost. I, I bless it and say thank you um, for teaching me. Thank you for teaching me and helping me learn. Because without those conscious thoughts, how would I grow? How would I understand how to surrender? And then that seems to just settle things down. It's almost as though that the conscious mind is accepted and it's been nurtured. It's like a little puppy that wants to have your attention all the time. And so the more you say to it, OK, I, I accept you, you know, then we can move into that deeper state. But I think as well, we should be very gentle on ourselves when it comes to surrendering and to blending, um, because it's very subtle. And to me, the practice of it is so important. It's not a case of we all sit within our practice circles and do the trance that's that's great and that's wonderful but it's the practices outside of the circles of making sure you're understanding yourself making sure you're putting in the time with your team and the most important aspect I feel is getting to know your team because your team know you better than you know yourself 
So once you've learned the personal aspects of how surrendering works for you, how you unfold the power, how you attune yourself to that blending stage, then naturally your team will start to work with you and be able to help you unfold that process. So then we go from those lighter stages of entrancement into those deeper stages of trance. And that's something that takes time. So, you know, blending and surrendering is something that is a two way thing between you and your team and also your own your own energy that you're creating. So it's it's looking and exploring what works for you. It's learning the art of letting go, which for a lot of us, we don't want to do. We don't want to let go. Uh, because in our day-to-day -day lives, we are conscious, we are here, we are active, and we know what we're doing. But with trance, we're saying, here I am, do what is needed. And, you know, we've got to learn to not really become aware of that process, you see. Um, but that takes a long time, doesn't it? And for me as well, there'll be times where I know my own team, when I've sat, um, have said about they wanted to do something different where I become really aware of the communication and other people that were sitting could feel that and said it felt different tonight it felt as though perhaps she was more aware um, but they did that on purpose so that I was becoming aware of what's going on so I can recognize the difference between when I am interfering or when I am aware and when it's a bit stronger so it's always um, ongoing and the more we practice it, the, the better that we we really become with it, you know. So it is that dedication and that practice. I think you're reading my mind or something here. <laughs> <laughs> you answer questions that I was going to ask. And then you said dedication, and I was going to ask about that too. But it mm. is better to practice instead of and and stay within the flow through the week instead of just showing up in circles and in a yes. class. And I know it's difficult for some. Plus, if we learn to give up what we're trying to control in our life, yeah, it's easy to learn to give up control with yes. our mediumship and our absolutely, yeah. definitely. So Janet asked, if you remember what you said in trance, are you actually in trance? Okay, that's interesting. I think you know there's there's various different degrees of it. So if we are becoming aware, um, you know, but but we're not really interfering with the communication and how we would recognize that I would say is if there's lots of stuttering going on if there's lots of pauses going on um you know to me there's got to be that flow um and and the blending I would say um but I think if you're coming back and you're saying you know I think I interfered there I think there was more of myself um being involved there then we're recognizing that we're not really within that trance state. But what we are within is really more of our own mind um, or speaking more from our soul. And I think the way we can recognize that is sitting and thinking, do I already know this? Do I already know that knowledge, that understanding of what's coming through? Because when the spirit world comes through, there, there should be a change within the energy. It's not just the, the vocabulary. It's not just all the the philosophy that's given um, and the evidence as such, but everyone that's experiencing that should really have a change um, within that energy of it. And you see with trance, everyone's gonna experience something depending on where they are in their own sensitivity. And everyone's gonna have their own perspective of awareness of what's going on with that. So, I mean, for instance, I remember years ago, I went to see a trance demonstration <laughs> And my mum came along and bless my mum, she, to get her to believe in anything is very, very difficult, you know, but she came along to it. And I sat there and I could see the changes going on with the overshadowing and various things. And a few others as well could, but when it came to my mum, she didn't see anything. She wasn't aware of, of anything, but did she believe that was trance or not? You know, it's down to, it's down to the individual. And I think, one thing that I'm starting to recognize is the evidence of things. There isn't a responsibility with us, with the experience, but it's more with the sitter. You know, has that really been authentic? Has it, has it moved that sitter? And do they recognize and see um, that there is something that's, that's happening there, you see? So I think it then takes off pressure with us 
because so often as mediums we put so much pressure onto ourselves that we've got to get it right we've got to do this and so that conscious aspect then won't surrender as much I'm kind of going off here but um but back to that question I I would say um you know it's it's learning and looking at when you know something's occurring and when something's not um and you know just sort of it's important for me with my own home circle we all sit together and they're they're honest with me they're very honest in was it you know was was there more of you in the way there was there the spirit there but they've got to know when the spirit are coming close to me and when they're not but we we have to remember the intelligence of the spirit world if they want it to go deeper then they will make it go deeper you see if there's a reason for it or a need for it um, and other times it may be lighter. So, you know, the whole development aspect is going to be different. Um, but that's where we sit and we learn about ourself, that power and our relationship with our team and get to know when we know they're there with us and when perhaps they're not. So there's, there's various different things with it, definitely. I agree um, with a lot of what you said. I also feel that most people, most trans mediums too, hear what they're saying because their mind can be out here and you can mm. hear it but maybe not yeah. remember a little bit yes absolutely kim asks would you agree that the energy has shifted and spirit now wants to be seen in our home and and zoom circles i didn't hear all of that then sorry could you say that again or is there a way i can see it in the chat box <laughs> it's okay i speak low i apologize <laughs> no it's absolutely fine kim would you agree Yes. Kim wants to know, would you agree that the energy has shifted and spirit now wants to be seen in our home or Zoom and Zoom circles? Okay. Um, I've, I think, again, if people are having those experiences and that's happening, you know, then um, clearly spirit will work in whatever way is, is needed. I think we've, we've got to look at what's happening here because the spirit world will always want to explore various aspects with us if there's a potential that's there within the medium um, to explore various different areas uh, you know whether that's within the home um, seeing certain things uh, whether that's on zoom and starting to see certain things through technology um, but I, I think this you know the spirit world need harmony they need energy and they need the right the right people to create the harmony of, of what they want to achieve. And I think, you know, when we look back at the old pioneers, uh, such as people like Leslie Flint, Gordon Higginson, um, Maurice Barbonell, Estelle Roberts, you know, all these wonderful, wonderful people, they all came from those home circle settings. And of course, that's very difficult now, but they, they didn't go into circles with, um, I want to do this, or I want to do that they sat for the love of spirit and I think that's what we need to focus upon and when we move the intention to sit with the love of spirit then what comes from that is what the spirit world need um, for whatever is is to be of in service so I think there can be many wonderful things that go on in private circles in zoom circles um, and I do I think the energy will shift as the circle progresses and as you all uh, move that intention to what the spirit world needs to create. That's a beautiful answer. I like that setting for the love of spirit. There's a lot out there that are not doing that. They're setting for their ego. Yes. So. And that, that's the thing. I think the more we work on love, loving ourselves, loving the sacredness of what we are, the, the spirit world can naturally draw close and do what, what is needed because they, they work through us. It's through us from spirit, through spirit, to spirit. You know, um, and I think the more we understand that process, the more we can recognize the service of it, the better. Sorry, I get passionate. So yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I'm running out of questions anyway, so you just keep talking. Kaz, it's funny that you answered that question like that because Kaz had, had asked, "Do you think you have to have the correct people, energies within your circles uh -huh. for them to be able yeah. to run effectively?" And can can some people's energy drain a circle? I believe they can. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, to me, you know, I, I come from that old school way. And to me, the, important, <laughs> the importance of um, 
harmony within the circle is essential you know and back in the olden days you'd have to be interviewed before you'd even be able to be a part of the circle that's how it was um but you know and i think that's quite good because the energy has got to match and i think with draining i think if you're allowing somebody else to drain your energy then that's something you're allowing to do um but if someone's doing that in a sort of intention way i I wouldn't really understand why they're, they're wanting to do that. So I think we've got to be aware of harmony with each other. And, um, you know, with, with my home circle, I've named it after a wonderful medium um, called John Harvey, and it's called the John Harvey Home Circle. And within that, he, the re reason why we've named it that is because throughout my life, I found people that sat within his circle, his home circle, and he was a trance medium, a very well-known medium around the local area in Berkshire. And he sat with trance for years and years, you know, and they had the same people, the same sitters, and then they would invite certain people in, you know, occasionally to ask questions, and his team would give advice. Um, you know, from what I've heard, he was the kind of gentleman that would just give advice to anyone and help them whatever they were dealing with um but they've got all the record we've still got all the recordings from those days of years ago and, and these are the days of gordon higginson those sort of times back then and to listen to that philosophy from then to listen to john's helpers coming through and speaking and to hear the laughter and the harmony between everyone in that circle is just wonderful and they would have the circle every week Nobody would ever miss um, the circle at all. And then afterwards he would get on the piano, the alcohol would come out and they'd have a big buffet and have a good old party, you know? And that's, you know, to me, if we can just create something like that, then that's lovely because you're all learning to trust. And I believe that if we have trust with those that sit for our unfoldment, then it almost allows our conscious mind to say, okay, I'm, I'm safe, I'm okay. I can be a bit more vulnerable and I can move myself further to then allow for other various communications to happen. So um, I think home circles are essential and it's something that I'm very passionate about and I, I teach a lot about because, you know, especially in the war times, they struggled a lot. Um, and somebody recently said to me, why is it not the same as it used to be? You know, and I thought, because time moves on. But also back then there was so much grief, I'm not saying there's not so much grief now because there is. Um, but in the in the war times, there was so much going on, so much devastation and loss that spiritualism became very popular. And so everyone started to develop their own home circles and friendships and having their own experiences and the spirit world started to come close in that much more personal way so I would suggest to people to you know develop your own home circles it doesn't have to be in person you can do it online and it's coming together and just sitting for the love of spirit and then someone may show signs of healing someone may show signs of evidential and so then you find those circles to develop those areas but you come back to the home circle to allow this, this power, this battery source of energy to really nurture you and help you move forward with your own journey. And that's what people such as the Estelle Roberts, the Gordon Higginsons, you know, he sat since he was four years old with his mum, Fanny Higginson, for years. And, you know, I think when we learn about the spiritualization of ourselves in our unfoldment, the more we can start to recognise what the spirit, spirit world wants us to do. So, I've gone off again, but no, there we go. Oh, no, no, it's fine. We're we're mesmerized by you. Your knowledge is amazing. I love it. Um, oh, I was going. I have circles. That that's my goal with my all my circles is to create the bond and the harmony. And it's really yes. hard to be a circle leader because you can really like somebody, but they still may not fit in. Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. My, the yes. Um, Janet asks, how did you find the people for your home circle? I would like to be in a home circle. Okay. Well, I'll tell you about my own journey, shall I, of how that unfolded. So, um, as I said, when I was 16, I was in a, an evidential uh, 
trance, not trance, sorry, evidential uh, mediumship class. And that was the first time that I'd gone into trance. And then I moved to Reading uh, because I used to be a professional Irish dancer. So my career moved up that way and I did all my training and dancing. And through this dance class, it was an adult class that I met a lady and we got chatting about spiritualism and it turned out that her mother um, was vice president of the local church uh, she used to be and was a, a great a great healer and developed there and um, so I started bonding with her and one day I said I just became aware of a gentleman called John in my mind John 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 and then I started to become aware of what he looked like I started to describe just giving her a message it just felt I needed to do that and she said, oh, that's John Harvey. Um, and he uh, was a spiritualist trance medium and a platform medium. And she mentioned about the tapes that she had from all of those days. And her mum used to sit for his development for many years. She said, would you like to listen to them? I said, oh, I'd love to. Um, so went round to her house and listened to the tapes. And so I met her in that in that way I feel spirit guided that to happen and while listening the spirit world almost put me in a spontaneous trance state and said would she be willing to sit for my unfoldment and so from then it's almost as though we was carrying on from what John had left behind so from then she would sit for my unfoldment every single week um, and then later on we then met somebody else who happened to used to sit in John's circle years ago for his trance development and I thought this is really interesting there's like I'm creating certain people that are to do with this man and um, my, my dear friend Zoe who I originally met she was very very good friends with John and said you know some of the experiences I mean with her she um, <laughs> that they used to have the Lyceum and her mum dragged her along to the Lyceum when she was about five years old to sit down with all these other children and see this gentleman going into trance. And I thought, that's incredible. You wouldn't get that nowadays. But I think, my goodness, must have terrified her <laughs> to start with being that age. But actually, how wonderful. And then from, from then, there was all, all of the, the history of everything that John created with the circle. But um, this other lady became a part of the circle. Then I met my husband um, in later years, you know, and um, he then sat for my development and we sat just the two of us for about seven years, um, just the two of us in a private setting. And um, then Zoe came into that and then the other lady, and then we've now got the John Harvey circle. So I think if spirit wants something to happen, they will. And we don't all live locally. You see, we, we me and my husband live in Devon, but uh, the others live in different areas. But we come together online and we we do it in that way. And then um, it's the last Thursday of every month. We are, we're starting to allow guests to come into the circle now um, that want to be a part of it and just experience the trance and ask my team questions and various things so we want to carry on what was left behind from John and um, we feel that he's very much a part of it and I know he is so yes awesome Crystal asks I haven't heard the term hold when moving into a deeper transplant state can you explain this a bit further hold in space uh, it's not saying that we just freeze within within that you know um but holding the space is where we're we're really allowing ourselves to blend it's like when we move into the power we can sit for the power and at first the mind will start to creep in but once we start to look at that process and we start to calm the mind and we start to attune deeper to the, the greatness of all that we are it's almost as though we're just being held by this great power that we are and we just start to be really within this atmosphere that, that comes around us in the spirit world once we understand the power you see the spirit world naturally draw close i feel and it's almost as though they're holding us within this sacred space between them and us and so i always call it that in between space um so the more we can hold ourselves there uh, the more that the blend is going to be there and it's the same with evidential mediumship we can be given a contact and become aware of somebody and the flow of that can be coming through and then our mind will come into it and we've lost the contact 
but we haven't essentially they're still there but it's just our awareness you see so you know when there's sayings such as hold it's it's almost like making sure you're moving into the power and staying within the power and staying present within that experience but of course that all takes takes time um, and energy but I think it's finding your own word of um, what works for you uh, with creating that space and uh, hold, you know, it could just be surrender or just staying in the moment. You know, there's so many different terms we can give that resonate with us better. Okay, I'm sorry, Crystal. So let me ask you, I always encourage everyone to blend for at least up to 10 minutes for maybe eight to 10 minutes before they even speak in trance. Would you agree? Absolutely. You know, that's something I've always thought that people that sit and, ex and experience the trance will sit there and think, oh, I'm getting a bit bored. It's taking forever, you know? Um, but actually um, I think it's essential that the more that you sit longer I mean, for me, I sit, if I know I've got my circle at half seven, I sit at seven. And I just sit and I'm already there. And, you know, the, the circle leader lets people in and I'm, I'm gone. I'm, I'm there, you see. So the more that we, we really start to blend with that, um, the better, you see. So I, I, I agree with that, definitely. I think it's important to have that preparation, to have that attunement. Um, and the more you do that, the more power is building, you know, and, and the more that uh, blending is starting to occur. I would agree with that, even with ones that have been doing this for 20 and 30 years. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. I don't understand people who just go into, go down and start speaking. It doesn't seem like they're in trance. So I'm not judging, I'm just observing, but you know, that's my yeah. opinion. Yes, but I think, um, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, um, definitely that, that hold and that creating that space beforehand, I think is definitely important. That's what trance is, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. In your opinion, when should a trance medium start taking on clients? Okay. Um, when should they start taking on clients? I think when you recognize how much you've been sitting for. But really, I think it's more about when the spirit world feel you're ready, when your team feel that you're ready and when the opportunities of people coming into your environments to sit and to allow these things to happen um you know when you're you're ready for that and i think your team essentially know when things are happening so if there's opportunities that you want where you want people to come and sit for you and it's not happening as much then perhaps that's telling you you're just not quite ready yet you've got more work to be doing but i think you know it's the same with anything if we're going out publicly if we're doing any sort of work with mediumship there's got to be that that discipline of training and the the time it doesn't matter if it takes 10 years 15 years it doesn't matter you know 30 years before you then start allowing people um to experience your trance you know to me um, it's it's recognizing when when you're ready for that, and if you feel ready for it, you see. I think there's got to be uh, authenticity within the communication that's happening. There's got to be that confidence within your development. There's so many aspects, but I feel when the opportunities uh, present themselves, you know, my my tutor always used to say to me, if spirit didn't think he was ready, they wouldn't give you the opportunities. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's that's quite interesting, actually. Yes. So if those opportunities are naturally happening and people are drawn to you and they're wanting to sit with you in various things, then I would say that's when the time is right. After they've developed for a while. Because <laughs> some people will drip, you know, 12 people in that aren't developed. I'm sorry, I had to put that in there. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think, you know, that's where the essential part of the development needs to, you know, for many years of sitting, um, because we've got to recognise we're dealing with we're dealing with people. You're, you're going into their their vulnerability and and all sorts can happen within that communication. Um, so we've got to recognise uh, the responsibility that we've got as mediums um, and the sensitivity within us, how, how much have we worked on ourselves in order to be able to help others and to become that channel, yeah, you know? Right? Yeah. 
But Kim's been, been developing for years. So I would just, yeah. You know. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on trans healing? Generally? Trans I think, you know, I love trans healing. Um, you, you know, to me, we have various different forms, don't we, of, of healing. We can have the, the spiritual healing. Um, but with trance healing, it's going even deeper where we're allowing the guide to come in. Um, and, you know, the guides can actually then speak and speak to the person and say what's going on and give various advice. And we can really heal in that, that deeper way um, with the spirit world. And I think there's been some remarkable stories when we look back in history, such as Estelle Roberts, um, Alec Harris, if anybody's heard of him, wonderful materialization medium. Uh, he was a remarkable trance healer. Uh, and a, a remarkable physical medium as well. But uh, Estelle Roberts, there was one occasion where she, somebody um, was in agony. Uh, I think it was something to do with their spine or something was going on with their back. And her um, control, Red Cloud, came in. And what happened there is as she put her hands on the, the part that, that needed healing, um, he had actually removed something out of the body so to me, we go from that trance healing to the physical healing. Some people will go, well, I really find that hard to believe. But it's, it's shown that that piece of bone that was causing such aggravation was in this medium's hand. So somehow the spirit world had almost really worked on that through that sort of, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for, sort of that de dematerialising and various things like that, through the energies and various things. So... I think trance healing, again, um, can prove so many different aspects. You know, it can allow for these deeper things to occur and move us into physical uh, healing as well. So it's it's um, it's fascinating, really. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you. I don't know why Kim is asking this. We have a circle that's proven that this, so I'm, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do you think physical mediumship is changing and it can now be done in home zoom circles so i think you know if there is evidence of that happening then i don't see why not you know i think we can all go through those experiences of the spirit world experimenting with us in so many different ways now you know we live in a very um technology world don't we so why not you know i think they as we're advancing within this world they're also advancing so you know we've we've got um the the photography aspect of, of seeing with with spirit and and manipulations of energies and seeing things going on there um but i think everyone's going to experience something differently so i i do believe with with physical um i don't think there's any boundaries you see uh i know for a fact, between me and my husband, we've had certain physical experiences go on between the two of us, which has been at a great distance where we've just been on the phone and there's been physical activity gone there and physical activity where I am. So to me, I do believe that the spirit world can do things if, if there's a need for it, if it's necessary. I don't think time or distance um, really interferes with it just because really when we come away from this physical body, we're, we're consciousness, we're energy, we're power, and that power is limitless. We're so limitless. And if it's just us that say to ourselves, we're not. So that's when we move past that, um, certain things can start to develop. Definitely, I, I do feel that. She just was one of our mediums Monday, so I was like, why are you asking that? <laughs> she, she did wonderful. <laughs> we can't hear you. Oh, no. You're muted. <laughs> all right you're gonna make me talk all right the, i asked because i wanted his opinion because some uh physical mediums and trance mediums are still very old school in their thinking and they say oh no absolutely not that can it has to be done you know in person so you hmm. know to hear to hear his opinion you know since is very refreshing since he is old school trained that's why i asked yeah oh yeah he's very good um, <laughs> but yeah, that's why i asked because you know he's he's old school trained with his mentors and things so that's why it's very refreshing to hear your opinion right mm -hmm. because it's keeping up with with uh, the modern 
technology. My ego got involved there, didn't? Couldn't you tell? <laughs> 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 oh God, I love you. You know, I just love you. <laughs> I think um, everyone's going to have different perspectives on it. Again, you know, and I think that even though I come from that old school way, and you know, physical mediumship um, and trans mediumship you know it's been developed in the old days from sitting together but obviously the spirit world i feel can work in various different ways and if there's a need and also if there is the evidence of that happening if there is proof and evidence of that happening and going on um and that we can really look closely at that and think well what's going on there is that something is that the, the physical energy of of the medium or is it actually spirit that's proving that then i think it's all advancing somewhere because i think the spirit world will want to work in whatever way they can because the, you know to me i think they very much know that trying to get people in person when we live in such a busy world is difficult but now we've got this wonderful zoom and we can all come together interact and so when we move past the physical and we're dealing with energy various things can build up so yeah i think everyone's going to have different um opinions on that but definitely i think as long as it's leading to the advancement of things and progression of moving forward yeah i like that yeah, it's refreshing to hear, isn't it? it? It really is refreshing. It tells me that you, you know, truly are are with the, the current energy flow. Mm -hmm. You know, Kaz is saying time changes and we all have to keep up with them, even in spirit. You know, they yeah. come down here and learn. They go to the spirit world, you know, professors, scientists, physicists, all of them. And they're now they're up there. Helping Absolutely. Us. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and I think... Um, when we transition i think you know we'll then be learning so much more won't we and how we can communicate with this world if that's something we decide to do um you know and i i think to me i always look at is there the evidence within that is there the intelligence within these things and if there is and what's it what's it doing you know is it providing healing is there a service there? Is there something that the spirit world are wanting that to happen on behalf of them? Because we have to recognize that it is about the spirit world and what they want to do through us. So I think as, as long as there's that within it, um, you know, we can evolve in modern times in, in whatever way that, that it works for us. Yeah. And also validating their existence. Yes, absolutely. Okay, is there any more questions? Before you start the set, do you listen to music first, allowing you to calm your mind? It's a very good question, actually, because for some people, they do listen to music um, that resonates with them. And I very much believe that music can create a certain energy, a certain power. And there's a certain emotion within it that can stir our soul and activate that soul energy to allow things to, to move where they need to move. Um, I know when I've done um like small trance demonstrations in somebody else's home and there's been a few of us uh, the spirit world have said just a piece of music just to sit just to raise the energy um to just really allow for everyone to come together and listen to that music um you know i know other people when with with the trance um some people would just all chat amongst themselves so that it takes the attention away from the medium that if that works for them just hearing a voice uh then that again, it's it's all sorts of different sounds. But personally, me, sometimes I do uh, sit with music if I've had quite a busy day, because sometimes that just gives my conscious mind a focus. And really, with all of these things, it's creating focus. So that the conscious mind is just being able to become more still. And other times, um, I won't. I'll just sit within that, that stillness and build up that energy that's required. It's, it's finding what works for you, you know, I think it's what resonates with your soul and where it moves you to. Um, and I think that's something that's important is where does, where do your experiences, you know, your practices of meditation or various different things, how are they moving you into this altered state? What's working for you? Because what may work for one person may not work for another. So it's looking at the individualization of how um, it works for you. Barbara asks, when you work in a circle and facilitate healing, 
do you believe that you also are held in some way? Absolutely. Um, you know, I feel that every time we sit on behalf of the spirit world, we are naturally healed. There is a great power that the spirit world bring. Uh, that's why people sometimes feel quite emotional. Um, other times they feel very happy. Uh, they feel refreshed and some people can feel tired. Everyone's going to experience something different. Uh, but the, the spirit world are bringing in that healing energy. So as you as the medium are providing the energy and the spirit world are, are providing that energy through you with your trance, um, not only is it benefiting others, but it's also going to benefit you and move you on. And I very much believe that every time we sit whether that's within the power, whether that's within our trance, that there is a residual energy that's built up within our auric field through our knowledge, through our understanding, through that particular contact. And every time that we sit, it's almost as though when we move into that power, everything is there, you see. And that then, that energy that's built up then moves it on. So there's a great healing within ourselves that can come from that um, so, yes, I, I do definitely believe that. And I do believe that it not only goes to the circle, but also to those people in need. Um, you know, the, the Buddhist monks, for instance, you know, the philosophy of their practices is uh, the, the bodhicitta mind, which is very much the compassionate mind. And so they don't just sit to heal themselves, but they sit on behalf of everyone. And I think that's beautiful. And I think that's what we should be doing to sit on behalf of everyone. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, guys, it's that time to say goodbye. And um, it was great. You're, of course, going to stay after, Joe, but it was great. And thank you, yeah, cool. everybody, for coming. I will leave information. This is going to go on YouTube. And I'll post a video and on my page and Joe's page. Joe does have a page and we'll i'll post that also do you want to say anything about your teaching and stuff joe um yeah so with teaching um if anyone is interested uh i do offer one-to-one -one mentorship um trance classes i also offer trance groups as well trance mentorship groups which is limited to about four people um because i very much believe in that that sort of closer connection with things um, I'm starting a path of the path of spirituality, which is a four week class and half of the money goes towards charities and organisations that are very much in need. And that's really looking at the power of the soul, um, the connection of the mind and energy and looking at other traditions to help us with our practices. Um, so, yes, I mean, if, if you want to um, ask me any questions about various things, then send me an email um, or join our, our Facebook group um, and we can take it from there. So, but thank you. It's been wonderful. I've really enjoyed sharing and um, answering your questions. And uh, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day wherever you are in the world. So thank you. Thank you, Julie, for having me. Thank you. It was great. Thank you, everybody. Bye.